get used to. So welcome. My name is Florian Bachmann. I'm from Deutsche Telekom, same as Andreas Geisler. And um, I like to present you today about the latest adventures of the OOM team. Next slide, please. So an overview of what you will hear today. So if you like to read in details, there is this new daily release key updates, which you can click later as a link. But um, let's focus today on some of more the details. And um, I will talk about today the infrastructure release version updates. So basically what the latest Kubernetes is to or keycloak requirements are and the major changes there. I will talk about our feature extensions in the readiness check oh and why God. it was necessary. Yes? Oh, sorry. Can I continue? Yes. Okay. Hello, hello. Oh, OK, sorry. one person left the chat. Maybe sorry for YHK to <laughs> probably different appointment. So basically, I will talk about the um, um, our why we needed to improve the readiness check or the OOM team. And um, I will talk about um, our uh, enhanced support for database uh, template operators and why it was important or it worked. From, a, from an OOM and from a getting ready for production perspective. The next topic will be support on up streamlining. And um, because as we learned today earlier by Bouillon, that ONAP isn't a platform mayor anymore, but rather a list of components that can be mixed together for the use cases. We have to get more cloud native ready. And that will be that point. The next point, enhanced support for ONAP service auto access authorization will be all about RBAC and Keycloak updates charts to comply with production requirements there will i tell you about cluster policies and kiverno and on the last thing adjust the default component deployment to own up global requirements it will be all about the unmaintained components and get rid of message router or maybe to edit if you need it but let's continue with the next slide so infrastructure up um Release, also infrastructure release version updates. So um, basically, we um, prepared the OOM repository to support the. No, can can you one back, one back, previous. Um, to support the latest um, Kubernetes version, currently it's one thirty, but currently we, um, it is available. But from owner perspective, we are fine and support um, one twenty eight and one twenty nine. That's included in the daily gating tests. We updated the service mesh tool Istio to the latest supported version 121. And that together with Kubernetes 128 um, enables us to enable the Istio CNI plugin, um, which um, and the new Kubernetes native sidecar features, which will give us an improved init containers. And it is part of since 128 as an optional feature, and it's a default feature in 129. And therefore, we needed to upgrade it. Um, we changed Keycloak to Keycloak X or to Keycloak Next Generation because the previous Keycloak was kind of um, up, unmaintained and old. And therefore, we switched from the Bitnami to the code centric chart with a new Keycloak X version. Um, it should be fully compatible to, to the previous one. We put the link to the readme of Keycloak X on it, the same functionality as Keycloak, but next generation, more awesome, better, slicker, leaner. And uh, in the readme, it's a quite good vision why they changed it and what is improved. And therefore we use a different chart to get this Keycloak X feature. And a lot of this talk today about database operators, but we will see that in detail in the next slides. Therefore, next slide. If I'm too fast or too slow or ping me, just communicate with me in the, in the chat. Um, the readiness check. Um, the readiness check was an early part of this OOM common functionality, which was a nice tool, but we had to improve it. And therefore it had the, the biggest version jump. And currently it will be part as um, the new readiness check has the image version of 603. And um, the Helm chart is 1302. And I will tell you 
why it was important for us or the story behind it. And in the orange box, you see the the Python script. Basically, the relative check is the Python script. You see it ready.py. And you can give it now different parameters. The latest parameter added, as stated in the text, is service name. And this parameter can be used to check if a Kubernetes service with a specific name is here. And um, this parameters provided by this Python tool are exposed now in the YAMLs and you see it in this yellow box with wait for and in the init containers you can say now wait for my service which should be part of the service SDC BE and in the green box you see basically the output of how it can look like in in, a, in, in, in the in the logs of, of the, such an init container and you see here for example, info checking for service SCC BE is ready and then found selector with ONAP SCC BE and then it can found the pod. It's search for a service, checks if the pod is ready, found the pod and therefore can say the deployment is ready. And that we had major issues inside DT to get ONAP services up and running because it was kind of in race condition. If, if a component was failing, we had to ensure that certain all the parameters could be in place. And this is improved readiness check. We don't have the issue that basically the components crashing anymore because they know how long they wait till everything is ready to work properly. And um, to, to, to have the story behind it, basically the first improvement was when, when um, um, the, um, uh, uh, first, we had this issue that, for example, we could have two MariaDB instances in one Kubernetes cluster provided by UNAP, and then the, the readiness check could match, or in the init container, it could wait for the wrong MariaDB database, and therefore the MariaDB database needed by that service wasn't ready, and therefore it was crashing. Then the, the first improvement was basically that we could, uh, could match um, um, app names. And then we had an issue since you, you saw it before, we are using tools like Argo CD or maybe Flux in the future for as a GitOps solution. And these tools add sometimes dynamic suffixes or prefixes to, um, to app names like X, Y, C, one, two, three. And therefore uh, we, we had an, an, an enhancement to that service to support dynamic labels to match them, even if they have strange numbers for, for, from the autoscaler. And um, with Istio, we were forced to introduce labels like app name and app version. Uh, but then we introduced the DB operators, which will be explained in the, one of the next slides. And they had this issue that an operator um, provisioned a new database, but the new database hadn't the label on it. And, and therefore, um, um, we um, ha had the case um, that or the operator spawned a like a backup job for a database and then the readiness check matched the backup job pod and not the real database and therefore it needed the 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 um the sixth generation of it 600 which was basically able to match for services and um that's saved and you see it from from the command line tool minus s service name or basically in the yellow box services and that, that saved us in the templates a, a, a lot of if if clauses like if i'm a service wait for that if i'm an operator wait for that and that could be more streamlined then and then um, in the current version 603 which was introduced only recently we discovered a bug that some services or some tools like um, for example mongo or postgres Jobs waited for um, and, and, and looked for a certain selector, but some Postgres or Mongo didn't offer a, um, a, a selector, only an endpoint, and therefore it was basically now um, enhanced. And you see it that in, in that example on, on the screen field, that um, for example, the Postgres job needed to find that endpoint, but um, and therefore, it's now able to look, for example, for stateful sets. And if the stateful set is ready, we can assume that the pod is ready. And if it doesn't have a selector, it now checks for an endpoint, and then it matches the correct pod. And then we can ensure 
that everything is in place to boot up that database. And it was, I guess, a major effort, but it's flexible as hell now. And it's a perfect tool for our cloud native journey to become production ready. If you have more questions about readiness checks and waiting for to check if an application is healthy or not, we can, I guess, talk about it in, in more detail. And if you didn't understand any word of it, all you have to remember, it's more awesome than ever. Therefore, next slide. Um, previously, each owner component had its own database. They were all provided by this common thing, and each database was slightly configured different. Some databases, some components, we used a database or had a shared database, but it was hard to make the databases operation ready. And therefore, we introduced database operators. Basically, it's a tool that runs with a CRD and a Kubernetes cluster that manages database um, creation and lifecycle management and usually comes with an update procedure and a backup and restore functionality. And we introduced or the OM team, Andreas and others, introduced operators for MariaDB, Cassandra, Postgres, and MongoDB. Um, for Postgres and MongoDB, the documentation is still in planning, but for the others, they are quite well. From, from our DT perspective, we use them with uh, configured backup and restore for the disaster recovery management, which is kind of a crucial part of the real network operation requirements. Otherwise, we cannot go live. And therefore, it's now managed by these operators that if a component basically um, needs an instance of a MariaDB instance, then it can request basically from the operator that it needs, for example, the MariaDB operator and the operator handles that the application gets its own MariaDB instance with backup and restore and everything basically configured as, as, as desired by the operator. And um, yeah, that's that's our thing to enable better lifecycle management and be able to upgrade databases in the best case with zero downtime. Um, and part of this upgrade operator process was to upgrade this readiness check from the slide before. Um, maybe on the next next slide, please. So um, to, uh, as we learned again earlier, ONAP is not a platform anymore, but rather a list of components that supports a use case and can be selected by a company like DT to fulfill their requirements for a use case like slicing. Um, and, um, and it's uh, as decided by TSC and Bjorn told it before that we should be able to pick certain components that we like to deploy separate any, uh, separate, and therefore we cannot rely that every ONAP application is deployed and basically it's splitting the monolith ONAP into several uh, separate microservices and therefore these um, common um, these common wrappers had to go and um, there was this um, component image pool secrets and the other one was the role wrapper on image pull secrets was part of this repository wrapper. You can find it in the um, OOM common. Um, and there's under common, you see the repository wrapper. And before that, we had the secret, uh, the issue until Montreal that each component had a hard coded image pull secret to pull stuff out of uh, Docker registry, which a uh, hard coded label own up Docker registry key. And um, basically, it was defined globally and now it can basically each component is able starting with the chart version 13.2.0 that each component can override it or define its own um, secret key for each component because we cannot assume anymore that there is one global key um, or one global secret for the whole stack uh, and because we cannot rely on this um, in this GitOps world, which component is installed first. Therefore, it's each component needs its own secret and therefore needs to reference its own secret. And um, that's by by updating um, the, the, the repository wrapper to enable that, it helps us 
to streamline ONAP even more. The same, and it was already part in, in the Montreal release, was, was done for the wall wrapper. Um, and um, um, so, um, um, for example, um, since the service account chart 13 or 1, it, it's possible to define the roles defined by um, for each needed for each component to customize it in each values.yaml. Um, next slide, please. It's a simplification, basically. Um, so that slide is um, enhanced support for ONAP services and access authorization. It targets basically on a working level key cloak and role based access, ABAC. Um, and um, it was um, from the initial proposal by Tata Consulting, and they have uh, 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 got a wiki page here authentication and authorization improvements. And um, the, the thing is that we need to inject over a values file. Um, to configure several realms. And for the people who know Keycloak, um, Keycloak separates its user configuration via realms. It's like a tenant. You can imagine it like a tenant. And this um, proposal is now able that you can, in, in an init container, basically define which role um, realm you need. And on the next step, it will be combined with Istio, that basically, um, if a user is authenticated via um, via Keycloak or has a valid token, then and or different. If, for example, if a user likes to access SO, then via this role bound uh, airbag access by this um, Keycloak, we can basically say is the network route allowed that the user is able to, uh, is is able to invoke an SO request via API, and, and basically this role-based access by Keycloak defined allows then the Istio configuration if a user is allowed to access as or not. I know that I explained it quite complicated. Long story short, um, network routing inside a Kubernetes cluster defined by Istio will use make use of this authorization policies and Basically, in a realm, we can decide which user roles a user has and if he or she is allowed to access components or not. And it will be a good thing for security. And yeah, but this next step is still missing, will be probably part of the next release. Um, next slide, please. This one is um, update charts to comply with production requirements. Um, in, in DT, probably in all the other companies, we have this privacy and security um, regulations. And um, to comply with that, we started to implement cluster policies because people can give statements of compliance. Hey, we, we promise we don't use the latest tech. We promise we don't use um, 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 an ingress host. We promise we don't use node ports or we promise we don't uh, use everything and and therefore we the t requires us um, to to implement these kind of best practices of cluster policies as um Kiverno or basically uh, cluster policies is, is the native kubernetes source and we use the tool um Kiverno to enforce these um, policies 24 7. so if a developer makes a mistake and uses node port by accident or uses the latest tag then this cluster policy will prevent that pod or application from being deployed into production. And um, in, in development, the person only gets a warning, but in production, it will not deploy at all. And um, currently, we have a list of 39 policies, and you can spend it. It's the best off list of the Kiverno policies that I linked here and many more here. And I provided in this page four examples of policies we are checking. Currently, we are checking 39. Basically, that's the, the, the best of you can find at the link. And five additional DT-specific ones. And all the changes we do to the hand charts, to OOM, or to certain policies, we provide up, back to, to the upstream repository. So you will be, all the hand charts of owner will be, or at least the, yeah, the, the ones we use, will be configured to the 
production requirements of, of a telco and the same as, as mentioned on the Caverno page here. And um, the only thing in ONAP, it's not reconciled or checked 24 seven, but we will put it at least in place. So then our clusters, it, it basically checked 24 seven and maybe one thing to, to, um, to add such an optional component Caverno to an ONAP deployment as well. But I guess for, for a lot of newcomers, just to try out um, ONAP, it would be too stressful in the beginning. But nevertheless, we will adhere to all security policies and best practices here, as mentioned on, on the last link by using the tool. Yes. Next slide, please. Um, and that's um, adjust the default component deployment to ONAP global requirements. And, and we heard it before that um, that's basically, we have now the issue that sometimes unmaintained components or broken components or components that are not compatible with Istio are currently off by default. But maybe some people need them anyway. And this is about, you can still do it. And, but in general, unmaintained um, components will be disabled. And they will not be deleted, but they can be activated on purpose again. Maybe if you like to bring them, um, um, make them, fix them, bring them alive again. Um, um, for example, like like this DMAP, DMAP message router, which we disabled, it's still enabled in the gating process, will be disabled soon. Um, but if you say, hey, I like to work on it, I like to fix it, you can enable it easily because it's still there only set to false, but you can set it to do again to activate it. Then I guess that's it. Next slide, next and last slide. Thanks for listening on a late Friday afternoon or Friday morning. For me, it's Friday after evening soon. And you learned today about, just to recapitalize it quickly, about um, we now support Kubernetes 128 and 129 because of native sidecar containers and Istio CNI. We improved the readiness check to make it production ready. We um, added more database super operators and enhanced the template support for it. We got rid of this generators for image pool secrets and roles to ha have the ability to deploy single components and not everything all by once. Um, we um, added support for rollback and, um, and a key cloak. Rollback will be used soon with Istio. Um, and we um, try to make the charts production ready to be deployed in a live network in Germany next year. And yeah, and still support the, the unmaintained stuff. Thanks for listening. I hope you could understand me quite well, or I hope you could understand me at all and you don't have a, a lip reader there. But yeah, thanks for listening. Sure, thank you very much, Rory. Great for great. <laughs> A pleasure. Uh, yeah.